Well, ladies and gentlemen, today, welcome to our Mutual Aspect series. And today we're going to be covering the mutual aspect between Venus and Moon. And what happens when Venus and Moon are directly opposite to each other, meaning they are 180 degrees apart or seven houses apart, which is called the mutual aspect, mutual reception, because they're looking at each other face to face. This 180 degree angle in astrology shows that a planet was transiting right directly in front of the other planet. Now, if you do not know, you know, um, exactly what degrees your moon and Mercury are mutually aspecting, because if it's a direct aspect, you know, because each zodiac sign is 15 degrees long. So if they're at 14 degrees each other, Moon and Venus are at 15 degrees. It's an exact aspect. If Moon is at 3 degrees, Venus is at 28 degrees, it's a very loose mutual aspect. But still it gives effect, but not, uh, you know, very strongly. So if you do not know exactly, you know, what kind of mutual aspect you have, what other mutual aspects you have, all the planetary conjunction and placements, for that, check out the links here. Check out my full astrological report. Where exactly on the second page, you'll know ex where each planet is placed along with all the other detailed information in the report, including my books, Astrology, Conjunction, and Aspects of the Speed of Light at this link here. So, Moon and Venus Mutual Aspect. What is Moon? Moon represents our mind, our happiness, what makes us feel calm. Moon is our mother. It's nourishment. It's how much nourishment we received in our life and how much nourishment we are able to give to somebody. Venus. Venus represents relationships, compassion, passion, love, romance, spouse, relationships, luxury, arts, creativity, media. Venus also represents liquid cash, liquid money. Not liquid money, meaning hard cash. So when these two planets are looking at each other, first of all, you got to realize that the mutual aspect that I'm giving here, the meaning, it's probably 50% of the entire meaning. Because we do not know what ascendant you have. We don't know what houses these planets are placed in. We don't know which houses they are mutually aspecting. We don't know what sign they're in, what houses they rule, what nakshatra they're in. So this is like a 40 to 50 percent of accuracy. So I'm telling you that right now. And you know, mutual aspect simply means that one planet is throwing off its aspect on the other planet and bringing the results of its own house upon the other planet. So if let's say Moon rules the seventh house in your horoscope of marriage and spouse. And Moon looks at Venus in the 12th house. Shows that your marriage could happen in the time period of Venus, which in Vedic astrology is known as Mahadashas. And just because not only Venus is a significator of marriage, but because Venus receives the aspect of the seventh Lord Moon. So it's that mutual reception is doing a lot more than what my video really is here going to tell you. But not only these two planets are benefic planets, but as much as you think this is a great, you know, mutual aspect, and it is, there's still, you know, gray sides to this. Because anytime you have this mutual aspect, first of all, it shows you're a very lovable person. You always love to engage in relationships with people. Your mind always feels balanced when it's in a relationship, whether a love or romantic relationships or when you're mingling with people. Like this person has to have friends. This person has to be around beautiful people. This person has to be around women, whether men or women, it doesn't matter. They like being around female figures and women because both Moon and Venus are female. Moon is a queen, Venus is a princess. And these people are extremely artistic, creative, are greatly fond of music. 
and their emotions are always tied into the amount of love they can receive from the other person. Like if you do not give them enough attention, if you do not show your love to these people, their mind just feels dried out. Their mind feels like a desert, like, oh, what's happening in my relationship? They're not loving me as they once used to. So that becomes a um, bit of an issue here. Also, you got to understand with this person, uh, mutual aspect, is that moon is a very waxing and waning planet. Moon is the waves the, of the water, up and down, up and down. These people are very indecisive about the relationships that they're in. Like for them, they can't just make an instant decision. Unless you're the most good looking and most beautiful person, they're like, okay, let's get married. Kind of like Anna did in Frozen. But usually they'll be like, <clears throat> they'll be always about their choices. They'll be like, well, what if this person is better than the one that I'm dating right now? Not because they want to cheat on you, it's just that the thing is, <clears throat> whenever it comes to the reality of the relationship, you know, when the honeymoon phase is over after a month or two months of taking them out and, and uh, treating them like a queen, when the uh, honeymoon phase is out, the reality of the relationship kicks in, where the guy just feels he's busy, yet he loves her or she loves him. So the guy or girl just feels like, you know, I love them. I'm just busy with my work now. I got them. I treat them to and wind them and dine them. So, you know, they're mine, but now I just gotta take care of my stuff. What happens with these people, they want, they expect that movie like romance at all times. And that's where the negative side of this comes into play because moon is a reflection of the light of the sun. So when Venus throws its light, moon absorbs it. The absorbing of the light simply takes all the light from Venus away. Because Venus is a very soft planet like Moon. It's not like Mars. If Moon takes all the, sucks all the energy of Mars, Mars will regenerate that energy. But with Venus, Moon will always take that energy. And Venus is so soft, it's not able to really regenerate that energy. So what happens is if these, it's kind of like the conjunction of Moon and Venus. If these people do not receive anything from the, from Venus side, that relationship side, that love side, doesn't matter if it's a love relationship or not. It could be a relationship between the person and their mother or their sibling or a cousin. If they're not getting that enough attention from the person, they'll look for somewhere else for that love. Yet, they, in, on the surface, these are very, very romantic, very emotional, very needy, uh, very polite people. But that politeness, you know, um, comes with a bit of a snafu. The other person has to always cater to them. Always like if you're giving them random notes and flowers randomly in the first two months of dating, they will accept, expect that probably throughout their life. If you don't do that, they will suddenly their energy will go zzz. Uh-oh, they're not giving me any more random letters, random notes. Uh-oh, they're not giving me roses anymore. Uh-oh, they're not taking me to that five-star steakhouse anymore. Something's happening, something's wrong. And if they don't get enough attention, they'll go into their own shell. And then they'll be like, well, maybe they don't love me anymore. Okay, let me look here on this side. So there are negative and positive things about it. Um, because... Moon is not a very um, solid planet with a foundation. Moon, moon is just like up and down, up and down. Moon is just like a planet on PMS all the time. Sorry, ladies, but that's how it is. Moon has to have a foundation of a solid planet. So let's say if this mutual aspect were occurring and moon was with Saturn, moon was with Mars or Jupiter. Moon would feel a lot more solid and will be able to withstand those dryness of the relationship. That's pretty much real relationship. They'll be able to withstand that because now Moon has the solid ground of Mars or Jupiter or Saturn or any other planet. 
if you have moon mercury together or with mutual aspect with venus actually we'll never get that actually uh, except in a divinal chart so in the mancha chart where moon mercury are conjunct and venus is opposite to them that's where you will see <clears throat> a person will always expect just the most bollywood like romance even after marriage because in birth chart you will not see mercury seven houses away from venus mercury is only going to be like 30 to 1 to 48 degrees away from venus but mercury and moon are very like dual planets they, they'll they'll switch from right there to right there like within two minutes they'll switch their decision this is why you know moon needs to have that solidness with this venus but overall just uh, you will find these people very pleasant very fun to be around very romantic to be around very artistic type of people but you know with every good there comes a bad unless you know there's a balance through other planets uh there's ergola that is happening that helps this mutual aspect okay so guys this is my analysis of moon and venus mutual aspect if you're new in my channel subscribe below Again, if you want to know where your moon is placed, what are the mutual aspects you have, all my books, consultations, reports, for that, check out the links here. Otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.